Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Worms. I'm your host, Bryant Real, and today we're going to be doing another Twilight Imperium 4 faction summary. And today we'll be covering the great insects of the galaxy, the Sardak Noor. So the Sardak Noor's home is just a little ways beyond the Unicorn Nebula, uh, which is a nice cheery sounding name. Their home planet is Quinara. Let me just double check. Yes, it is Quinara. It's uh, quite a large uh, red planet, um, pretty much a hellscape. It's a big red dusty ball, basically. There are no oceans or bodies of water, constant electrical and dust storms, uh, great polar storms. Um, I don't know if there's much moisture at the poles, but most of the water on Quinara, like, you know, the, the Sardak Nor themselves need moisture. But this is actually mined typically off of uh, the other planet, Trenlac. Uh, it's kind of an icy planet. So they kind of ship all their water and salt and everything from Trenlac over to Quinara. As you might expect from a planet ruled by insect people, the population is extremely high, somewhere in the neighborhood of 28 billion. And it's not, at first glance, very technological. Uh, their homes are not how you would envision it. Well, maybe they are. The homes are like hives, so perhaps made out of the material of the planet itself. Kind of, uh, they build like kind of these rounded structures, just like you might imagine, like a, a a beehive or something like that. And they live in those. They build those for their, you know, their buildings. Uh, very very busy. They do have like vehicles and traffic and spaceships and all that. Obviously, because of the population, it's quite a congested sort of traffic system. Uh, as you can see, if you go to their capital city of Hakar, i double check the name. Hakor. Sorry about that. So, it's uh, quite a desolate, horrible planet to live on for us. Uh, pleasant seems pleasant enough for the bugs. Uh, they have, I guess, kind of a religion. So, the Sardak Noor, Sardak is supposedly their queen mother. So, this being that they all revere, but nobody's ever met her. And all the commands come from uh, this other dude, the Envoy of the Queen, who's selected by a group called the Veiled Brotherhood. So it's this group that kind of wields all the political authority on Quinara. Um, but if you talk to most of the uh, the Sardak, nor most of the bugs, then they'll tell you, oh no, we, you know, we follow Sardak. The, uh, the, the uh, Sardak Noor are really well known for their ferocity in combat, as can be seen in this fairly well-documented battle against the uh, Federation of Soul. That being said, um, despite being such a militaristic people and society, does not mean that they're above the occasional diversions and amusements. Tra -la 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 -la, springs in the air, and I'm a flower with nothing interesting to say. Ah! 
A bee. I am a cute little bumblebee. Here I come. <laughs> so they're just as well-rounded a culture as most others, but you're going to see in the game a lot of their abilities are going to be focused on their combat and the the abilities of their unique, uh, the Teklar elite soldiers. So let's take a look at their starting uh, units and systems. So they start with, again, the two planets, Quinara and Trenlac. Quinara is a pretty decent planet, production of three, and with one influence. Uh, Trenlac's kind of a piece of garbage. Again, it's just a frosty ice planet they use for water. It's got just one production. They need that, and it, it makes it a 4-1 system, so that's pretty decent, with the ability to double dock if you wanted to put two in there for some reason. Uh, they have no starting tech, and I cannot offhand think of another faction that does not start with any technology. These guys are not going to be willing to, winning the technology game. But uh, they do have a pretty good starting unit setup. So they have the two carriers to start with that you often want for early game expansion. They have five infantry. So really well suited for getting out, spreading out very, very quickly, as you might expect swarming insects to be able to do. They have one cruiser for defense. Uh, no fighters, interestingly. So a little bit of fleet, a little bit of fleet vulnerability in the very beginning. Uh, one space dock, one PDS. So the Sardak Nor have probably the easiest, probably the easiest faction to pick up and play from the get go. It's because their faction ability is so easy and only have one of them. And so they have something called unrelenting, which means they get to apply plus one to the result of each of their unit's combat rolls. So they're just really strong in combat. So I know a lot of the times I've played with people for the first time, sometimes people will pick the Sardak Nord just for that, because there's so many little rules, you know, they figure this is one less thing to keep track of. Very straightforward faction. And when you look at their flagship, it kind of just complements that even more. The Kamoran Nor, apply plus one to the result of each of your other ship's combat rolls in the system. So any ships accompanying the flagship, are, you know, they're adding plus two to all of their rolls. So very effective in combat. They also have a special um, Dreadnought. So this is one of their faction technologies, is, a, is their a special Dreadnought, uh, which actually has better bombardment than most other... Uh, fly, uh, dreadnoughts. So they have a bombardment at four with two dice. So quite an effective little uh, bombing thing. One of the things you'll notice with these guys is, yeah, uh, they really kind of do conflict with the soul. You know, the, the Federation of Soul is really good ab about spreading out infantry and holding planets. And the Sardak Nor are kind of in that vein too, where they're just really good at spreading their infantry out and uh, aggressively <laughs> and attacking, which we'll, we'll see when we look at some of their leaders and stuff. But their extra triumph is really good at helping take these planets with just really some really strong bombardment. Upgrades, obviously, to the extra trireme 2, uh, which speeds it up a little bit. Okay, their other faction technology, also kind of devastating here, the Valkyrie Particle Weed. After making combat rolls during a round of ground combat, if your opponent produced one or more hits, you produce one additional hit. So if you have something that's kind of a close fight, every not well, once per combat round, as long as your opponent hits you, you he dies back, right? So you, it's not so much a gamble if you have an equal, like a two-on-two -two combat, for example, uh, because if he hits one of your guys, he's also losing one. So that's pretty effective there. In addition, their mech, the Valkyrie Exoskeleton. After this unit uses its sustained damage ability during Garon combat, it produces one hit against your opponent's ground forces on this planet. So... Effectively, if you combine that with the Valkyrie Particle Weave, as soon as your mech takes a hit, your opponent takes two, right? So, yeah, for one round at least, uh, it's a pretty good uh, conversion, hit conversion. So, pretty effective little fighters. Let's take a look at their leaders. So, their agent is Tra. At the end of a player's tactical action, you may exhaust this card. If you do that, player may place two infantry from their reinforcements on a planet they control in the active system. So, again, just like the Federation of Soul, kind of gives them a way to just throw extra guys out onto the board. Their commander is Gahom Sekas. He's unlocked by controlling five planets outside your in non-home systems. So, shouldn't take too long with the amount of infantry and carriers you're starting with. 
So during the commit ground forces step, you can commit up to one ground force from each planet in the active system and each planet in adjacent systems that do not contain one of your command tokens. So as long as your infantry aren't locked, you can shuttle them in really quickly from nearby planets uh, to help out in ground combat. So again, this is just another way that these they, they swarm. Their soldiers just swarm in mass groups uh, to help overwhelm the infantry of the, of the defenders. Uh, their hero has a really interesting ability, which uh, yeah, it's called Teklar Conditioning. Uh, the hero himself, or herself, is Cheval the Harbinger, uh, unlocked, of course, by scoring three objectives. After you move ships into the active system, you may skip directly to the Commit Ground Forces step. If you do, after you commit ground forces to land on planets, purge this card and return each of your ships in the active system to your reinforcements. So what this lets you do is, let's say somebody is about to win the game, and you need to take their home system. Uh, so you can see that their planet, you think you can take it, you have enough infantry in range to get there, but they have a massive fleet that you just can't, don't think you'll be able to get through. Well, what this hero lets you do is charge your ships into that system, and effectively what you're doing is you're running their blockade and just smashing all your ships into the side of the planet and all your troops can jump out and just fight the infantry. So you're bypassing the entire space combat. Well, you're bypassing everything from moving into the system until ground combat. So you get to skip all of those other steps. You are losing your ships. All the ships that smashed into the side of the planet are going to be destroyed. Obviously, don't send ships that don't have troops on them, or troops that you don't need. But it could be a pretty clutch move to just be able to, you know, send all your guys in for a really important planet, Get enough guys on there to hold it. And, uh, yeah, you're swinging. So I think that's one of the more exciting... I don't typically like playing the Sardak nowhere. Because I'm not... I, I think it's just... I kind of like more tricky... I don't know, trickier sort of play. But, um, ah, this is such a good move. This I think this is up there with trick moves. That would be a lot of fun to pull out. So, yeah. Some pretty nice moves from the Sardak Nor. Uh, they're... Their uh, promissory note is also actually pretty interesting, the Teklar Legion. So what it seems like thematically is that you're allowing somebody else the use of some of your soldiers, of your Teklar soldiers. And this is at the start of an invasion combat. Apply plus one to the result of each of your unit's combat rolls during this combat. If your opponent is the Nor player, apply minus one to the result of each of his combat rolls during this combat. So you're giving somebody, for one combat... Uh, because you have to give it back when you're done. You're giving them the ability to get your ability for an invasion. So, again, could I wouldn't say it's top tier, but it's not entirely useless either. I think this is something that might have some value if somebody has a very crucial invasion that they need to pull. Uh, just be careful. But even, to be honest, even if they use it against you, you've already got your, your, your plus one. So you're just losing that, right? So, yeah, pretty neat. It's all right card there. Well, that's it for uh, for the Sardak Nor. Now, for their anthem, uh, the Sardak Nor, not the brightest folk in the galaxy. They love things that are simple. They love things that are straightforward. They love things that are militaristic. So, of course, this is going to be their national anthem. And again, if it doesn't play directly in the video, it'll the link will be in the description. Thank you. Have a good evening and good gaming. Climb a 
tree and they all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain the ants go marching for the rain 